Cape of Good Hope was the Batavia's last port of call before Java. The course then lay due east for 3,000 miles to the threshold of the Great Southland, a vast and unknown continent ignored by all the European powers. Cornelius, persuasive, insidious, plotted a mutiny. With the connivance of Captain Jacobs, the Batavia was manoeuvred away from the other ships. The plan was to seize the vessel and take up piracy, a more lucrative and exciting pastime than keeping accounts. With intrigue occupying many of the crew and passengers, and Commandant Pelsart sick in his bunk, it is not surprising that discipline was lax. The ship was off course as it approached the ill-omened Abrolhos Islands. According to the log, the lookout thought he saw moonlight on the water, when in fact it was the sea breaking over the reef. Pelsart's journal for Monday, June 4th, reads, I felt a rough, terrible movement, and immediately afterwards the ship held in her course against the rocks, so that I fell out of my bunk. It became daylight, and we found ourselves amongst rocks and shallows on all sides, and very suddenly it began to surf and foam around the ship so that we could not stand or walk. The Batavia had snagged herself on Morning Reef and driven a trench right into the coral platform. At low tide, it was possible to jump onto the shallow reef from the bow of the ship, but as few people could swim in the 17th century, 40 drowned trying. 250 others managed to get off in small boats or stumble hesitantly ashore. They waded knee-deep across the treacherous, brittle coral, tearing and lacerating their legs as it crumbled under their weight. Nearby were two small islets and further away a somewhat larger one. Used today by fishermen and marine archaeologists, this island was named Batavia's graveyard by the survivors. It was, said Pelsart, a dry, cursed earth with such a host of flies. He decided to head for Java and help. 49 people in an open boat sailed 1,200 miles, one of the great sea voyages of all time. The Batavia, meantime, broke in two, and the survivors busied themselves getting the remaining 70 people ashore. So that Pelsart could find them among the tangle of islands when he returned with water, they built a beacon from coral slabs. September 1629, the rescue ship unexpectedly appeared from Java with Pelsart on board. Both groups raced to her, the mutineers to seize the vessel, the soldiers in a captured boat to warn Pelsart. They reached the ship first, but Pelsart initially disbelieved their stories of murder, mass rape and godless conspiracy. However, he was finally convinced by the attitude of Cornelius, captured by Webby Hayes during his last attack on Hayes's forts. All the mutineers were seized after brief battles. To confine them, cells were built from coral on Long Island. They were the first prisons in Australia, a country that 160 years later became one vast prison. 